for an operation. So let's just pray and commit these people onto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we thank you that we are here to praise and worship you. And that we say, Lord God, that we're here not through any strength of our own, but by your grace and tender mercies alone. Father, this morning we just give you thanks for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for the riches of your mercies that are new every morning toward us. Lord, help us to really experience those mercies in a very real and tangible way today as we gather like this. As people watch in this morning, Lord, may they know your presence with them, please. We ask you to remember Daisy this morning. Father, you know the ongoing situation with Daisy. And all we can do is, Lord, that you would put, ask that you would put your arms around her. And that you would comfort her and strengthen her. That you would help her. That you would be all that she needs you to be. That you would be, Lord, as we often sing, her all in all. But Lord, above all, we ask you, please, in Jesus' name, that you would heal her by the power of your spirit, please. In Jesus' name. We pray for we Baxter, Lord, as they move towards removing the oxygen tubes, Lord God, that he has become so dependent on. We ask, Father, please, that as these are being removed and this trial is taking place to try to get him to breathe without, Lord God, the assistance of this apparatus, we just pray that his lungs would have the capacity to do this, please. That you would draw alongside we Baxter, Lord God, and that you would bless him and heal him in the name of Jesus. We also remember Karen, Father, who's going in for an operation. And, and we pray, Almighty God, that in the name of Jesus, you would be with her, that you would draw her to yourself, that she would find comfort in you and strength in you, and that she and her husband, Lord, would just know uh, the power and presence of God, and that you would speak into their lives at this time. And we pray that whatever that operation entails, that all would go well, and that she would be home again soon with her family, please. And Lord, on this Remembrance Day, we again just thank you for those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, for those who served, Lord God, and suffered with post-traumatic stress disorder, others, Lord God, who were wounded and maimed, people, Lord God, who have uh, given so much of themselves in the service of the country, Lord. We thank you for them. We thank you for their commitment. We thank you for those, Lord, who, who continue to serve, and we pray for your blessing and your protection upon them. Almighty God, as the nation remembers at this time, we pray, Father, that as we do give thanks for those who laid down their lives for us, we remember above all Jesus, because he laid down his life, a sacrifice for us to pay a debt that we could never pay, that would free us from the tyranny of Satan and of sin. And that for those who trust in Jesus, there is life forevermore. Lord, may we all today give thanks for those who in wars and conflicts and the troubles give so much for the freedoms that we enjoy today. But may we, Lord, above all, give thanks for Jesus and his sacrifice for us. Lord, as we turn now to your word, may you speak to us through it and help us, Lord, to hear what it is that you're saying to us, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're looking at the doctrine, the eternal security of the genuine born again believer. And it's really good because we hear people praying, and Billy and all praying this morning, the early prayer meeting. It's brilliant to hear you know, people grasping what is being taught, uh, but more so grasping that, as Billy said, we just don't take Tally Gordon's word for it. He didn't put it that way, but it was very nicely put. He said, we need to go and read our Bibles ourselves. And that just blessed me because that's what it's about. Don't take my word for it. I am a human being. I'm a sinner. I live in a sin cursed body in a sin cursed world. I can make mistakes. I can get things wrong. We all need each other to support and guide one another. Uh, and it's about ultimately encouraging each other to get into the word of God and see what it says. So we're looking at the doctrine, the eternal security of the genuine born again believer. And we've seen how Satan always works to rob God of glory by undermining the Christian's walk with God. How many Christians here have ever felt Satan trying to undermine their walk with God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every Christian puts, puts their hand up that. But that's what he does. He constantly makes us doubt if we are truly saved, and he continuously causes us, where possible, to waver in our faith and to serve the Lord in fear. And he uses his fifth column, which I've called the loss of salvation, by which 
Satan assails Christians to cause us discouragement, defeat and despair and make us ineffective in our service to the Lord. That's what it's always about. And it's not even about you in that sense. It's because he hates God and he wants to rob God of glory. He just happens to use us and to cause the discouragement, the defeat and the despair in us to make us ineffective, therefore robbing God of glory. But once, once a born again Christian realizes or begins to realize that by God's grace they are, as I was saying last week, that they are a well-kept person. They can stop believing the absurdity of Satan's lies and walk in God's truth. Now, of course, there are numerous Bible verses and passages that suggest that born-again Christians can lose their salvation, and we looked at a number of those over uh, a period of weeks. But when you read those passages in the broader context of God's Word, it's an absurdity to think that a born-again Christian can lose their salvation. But, nullius sin verba, do not just take my word for it. Search the scriptures yourself to see if these things are true. God's word says, for example, that Jesus will confirm, this was what we were looking at last week, Jesus will confirm Christians to the end that they may be blameless in the day of the day of the Lord. And the word confirm simply means to guarantee, to make steadfast, to make firm, to make good the promise, to prove the truth, to establish, to secure, and to strengthen. And another word that we were looking at last week, also used by Paul and Jude, is the word preserve, or preserved. Do you remember uh, it says preserved in Jesus Christ? Paul, Jude talks about being preserved in Jesus Christ. Paul talks about preserve me for his heavenly kingdom and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the lord and this word preserve or preserve it means to absolutely unequivocally be clear about this absolutely unequivocally preserve something from perishing or being lost it means to guard to keep him or her safe from a plot to conserve from ruin. And the Hebrew equivalent is the word shamar. And it means to keep watch over as a watchman, a keeper to hedge about and to protect. In other words, the Lord is a watchman over his people, a trustworthy keeper of all of his redeemed. And so Christian, it is true this morning that you are a pickled person, that you are preserved in God's grace that you are a well-kept saint of God. And I've said many weeks, it's not a license to sin. God is a father who loves his children and he will discipline those who walk in disobedience. But nonetheless, if you are a genuine born-again Christian, you are a well-kept saint of God. Turn please to Romans chapter 5. And we're going to read the first 11 verses. Paul's writing. And he says these words. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. If we Christians, if we believe that the Bible teaches that Christians are a well-kept, saved while being saved, 
confirmed while being confirmed, preserved while being preserved. People, if we believe this, then we must also accept that only genuine born-again Christians, by the power of the Holy Spirit in them, shall persevere unto the end. No born-again Christian, I don't care how sanctimonious you are, how religious you are, I don't care how many Bible verses you can quote, I don't care how wonderful you are in your prayer life or whatever else. No born-again Christian will be able to endure to the end whatever is coming in this life or whatever is going to come upon our lives. None will be able to endure to the end by their own strength or by their own performance. It can only happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. And some people suggest, some people suggest that the preservation, remember we were talking about preserved in Jesus? Some people believe or suggest that the preservation of the saints is also equivalent to the perseverance of the saints. There is a difference. So please hear what's being said. Some people suggest the preservation of the saints is also known as the perseverance of the saints. Now I don't believe that. I believe they are two distinct things, but they are without doubt inextricably linked. They go hand in hand. The preservation of the saints and the perseverance of the saints go hand in hand. But, I think it's safe to say that some Christians know very little in their experience or in their walk with God about perseverance and what that actually means. And so I was speaking to a man on Wednesday night that will not disclose under any circumstance of breach of confidentiality. I was speaking to a man on Wednesday night who told me, and I felt sorry for him, was near tears. He says to me, I have only two teeth left in my head. I have only two real teeth left in my head. The rest are false. And he says, and you wouldn't believe it, he says, I'm now experiencing toothache. <laughs> I totally felt for the man because I knew when I lost my tooth, I felt like a part of me had already gone to heaven. So, so there's quite a lot of him that's gone to heaven that he's only got two left. But here's the reality. Much as I feel very, very sorry for this man, you know what? He'll just have to persevere until he sees a dentist, which could be a long Jesus could be back before he gets a chance to see that. <laughs> but anyway, Christian, let me ask you, have you ever had anyone approach you with a really religious, good intention attitude, telling you that whatever sort of difficult situation you faced, that you just have to persevere? Have you ever had anybody say, you just have to persevere, or they'll use the classic, oh, now you need to understand, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. I hate Christians who come and say that. I don't mind it if they come and say, they're, they're, they're Italian, I really understand, and it's really sad that we're going to, and all. they might need to pray for you, and you do need to try to hold on to that, you know, we do have to press on, and, and, you know, I just pray that God will give you strength. But, you know, all things will work together for the good to those that love the Lord. It's all right with them like that. But see what pump somebody comes to you, are going through hell or whatever it is you're going through. And they're like, ah, all things work together for the good. I just yeah. find it hard to handle. And I have to refrain myself from quoting scripture back. Like, Judas went and hanged himself. Go you and do likewise. <laughs> One of my boys this week uh, turned 16. Um, and during the week, um, he specifically asked me for a gym membership. That's what he wanted for his 16th birthday. I want a gym membership. To which I respond, I'm sure, sure, let me know how that goes. <laughs> because what would happen, without any doubt, what would happen is, he would go once or twice, he would come out thinking he's Arnold Schwarzenegger or Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and then he would complain the next day of having sore arms and, and, and sore legs, and he, and he just wouldn't go back. Uh, and the type of gym, gym membership that makes somebody like that, it requires perseveration. Donnie will know that. It require, doesn't require perseveration. Per perseverance, Donnie. Donnie knows because he does that. Perseverance, I said this to my um, foster son, it requires perseverance, perseverance to pay for the body beautiful. I don't need to go to him because I have it. Well, he's sure you're deceived. <laughs> But it, it, it really does. If you've got to put the effort in, if you want that 
you know, have that Arnold Schwarzenegger look. You've got to put the work in to do it, you know. It also required, in his case, it also required my money. So, <laughs> so he got a cake or one candle, some cash and two games for his console, no gym membership whatsoever. But let me ask you something this morning, Christian. When you think of the word perseverance, or the perseverance of the saints, is that how you see it? Do you see it that it's the need to keep going on? The need to persist in your walk with God, not giving up, or worse, being fearful in case you do give up. And it becomes almost like the drudgery of the Christian life. And oh my God, I hope I die soon because I can't live like this. I can't go on like this. This is awful. And it becomes a Christian life becomes a drudgery because you think perseverance, oh my goodness, I don't think I'm going to make it. And sometimes when I look at the sinfulness of sin in the world and you know see it all around me, I ask myself, am I able? Better still, am I willing to persevere and to keep persevering? Like, let's just think for a moment. Whatever your circumstances are, Say they're good, bad, or indifferent, and you're living in this sin-cursed world, in a sin-cursed body, you know that as you get older, you're going to start breaking down and whatever else, and, uh, and everything that goes wrong will go wrong. And you look ahead, and then God comes and says to you, well, listen, I'm going to give you another 50 years. <laughs> I'm going to give you <laughs> Please, Jesus. Please just take me home. Because sometimes the Christian life becomes a drudgery. And we see perseverance and the perseverance of the saints like this. I can't be flame and bothered. I don't think I'm going to make it. Or as a part of us said, I just want it over because I don't think I'm going to make it. And at least at the minute I feel good enough that if I pop my clogs and go to heaven, but next week I might not. I have no idea, look at this. I have no idea how many times, God is my witness, he must be fed up the back teeth, listen to me. I have no idea how many times over the past 38 years that I have known the Lord, that where I have said to him, I just can't keep doing this. I'm going to give up. I just cannot be bothered anymore. I just want to die and go, go and be with you. Is that you, Christian? Have you often said it or felt the same way? I can't keep doing this, Lord. I just can't go on. Well, the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 5, which we read, that we, born again believers, we who have been, please read it for yourself and see that it's there. We who have been, done and dusted, we who have been justified by faith, who have peace with God. Now let me make something clear again. There's a difference between having peace with God and knowing the peace of God. Okay, so once you have peace with God, that can never ever change for all eternity. You have peace with God, but your peace of God can fluctuate a thousand times a day depending on your mood and whatever is happening in your life at this time. But Paul says, we who have been justified by faith, who have peace with God, who have 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, access into his grace in which we stand, that we should be rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. We should be excited all the time, not just on Sunday morning when we sing happy songs, we should be excited all the time at the thought of the glory of God, that one day we're going to be with Jesus, that one day we're going to see him face to face. It shouldn't, shouldn't just make something like well up in us and it brings a smile to your face when we sing it on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. We should be rejoicing all the time, the Apostle Paul says. In fact, he adds this, and not only that, he says, but we should also glory. We should rejoice in tribulations. And the word here he's using is hard struggles of life. We should be rejoicing in the hard struggles of life, knowing that those hard struggles, those tribulations, produce perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. And then he goes on. Hands up this morning, every born again Christian who glories and rejoices when they face hard struggles in life. I've just lost my job. Here's the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I have not enough money for my electric aspect. Uh -huh. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it. I just been diagnosed with cancer. Well, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. But Paul says we should be rejoicing. We should be glorying in the hard struggles that come upon us. And poor Jimmy's book, I breached the conference. <laughs> Jimmy's everybody who's a uh, fervent prayer, go and pray for his toothache. Poor Jimmy's toothache is a hard struggle for him. It's a time of tribulation. But look, he's still here. I was panicking this morning, Jimmy, in case you didn't come. The Bible, the Bible said, look, it's a hard struggle, but guess what? He's here. He's here this morning praising and worshiping the Lord. And when I've said to you this morning. I have no idea how many times over 38 years I've said to the Lord, I can't keep doing this. The fact is, 38 years later, I'm still here worshiping and praising the Lord. That's not about me. That's not about me. Christian, if you have said, I can't keep doing this, I just can't keep going on, but you're still here. You're still pressing on. That is what the Bible calls perseverance. And whatever challenges the Lord allots us in life or permits to befall us, it is that we might persevere and produce the character of Christ likeness in us. Now, you'll get the point of what I'm trying to Let me just say that again because you'll, you'll get the point in a moment. If you have said, I can't keep doing this, I can't keep going on, but you're still here after whatever number of years that you've been walking with the Lord. If you're still pressing on, that is what the Bible calls perseverance. And whatever challenges the Lord allots us in life or permits to befall us, it is that we might persevere and produce the character of Christ's likeness or Christ's likeness in us. Do you hear? But let me share something more wonderful this morning. And I hope encouraging to you. The word persevere or perseverance should never, ever, ever create in the born again Christian a sense of apprehension and fear. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to make it. Ooh, how am I going to get through this? You know, I don't think I'm going to. I sometimes have said to people, I don't think I can cope anymore. I can't manage this. Okay, give up. Give up. Because a good way of finding out if you're a genuine born again Christian, because the Lord will never let you know. You'll never feel comfortable even in your sin if you go back to the Lord. Not that I would recommend that to anybody <laughs> this morning. About it. The word persevere and, and perseverance, it should never make the born again Christian uh, apprehensive or fearful. Remember, Satan always works to rob God of glory by robbing us of God's blessings and to make us waver in our faith and serve in fear. But the word persevere or uh, perseverance, which Paul uses, it's this word, hupomone, hupomone, and it means what you would typically think, what we would typically think perseverance means. It means that patient endurance, steadfastness, to stay, to remain, to abide, to wait for, to continue, but it also means something much more, something more wonderful. It also means this, here it again, it means to be enabled to patiently endure, to be enabled to be steadfast, to be enabled to stay, to be enabled to remain, to be enabled to abide, to be enabled to wait for, to be enabled to continue. But the final part of this is most wonderful. It's most excellent because it means this. Perseverance, from a Bible point of view, means this. To be under someone's authority. To be under someone higher. So when you put this together, Christian, I believe, and you search the scriptures yourself to see if these things are true, but I believe we are being told that our need for perseverance is in the same hands of the one who also preserves us. Do you hear that? That our need for perseverance 
is in the same hands of the one who also preserves us. Jesus, by the power of his Holy Spirit in us, will enable, equip, and empower us to persevere unto the end. You know, the, the, the theologian Augustine said, perseverance isn't a work of man, but the gift of God to empower his children to persevere in faithfulness to Christ, even to the end of their life. It's not incredible said again. Perseverance isn't a work of man. If you're trying to persevere in your own strength, you're going to keep falling on your face a thousand times a day. You can't do it. You cannot preserve yourself. You cannot save yourself. You cannot justify yourself. You can't do anything as far as God is concerned in your own strength or by your own effort. Well, then neither can you persevere in your own strength. Perseverance isn't a work of man, but the gift of God to empower his children to persevere in faithfulness to Christ to the end of life. Christian, perseverance is a work of the Holy Spirit in those who belong to Jesus. Do you hear it? It is a work of the Holy Spirit in those who belong to Jesus. And just as we can't endure to the end in our own strength, or pr uh, preserve ourselves onto the end, neither can any genuine born-again Christian persevere to the end in their own strength. We must all look to the Lord alone to enable us. However, having said that, every born-again Christian should at least have a willingness to persevere, which is motivated by our love for Jesus. The very love of Jesus for us and our love for Jesus should compel us, motivate us to persevere, but we must do it in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And so Christian, think about this, and this is why we're driving that point from a few minutes ago with tribulations. If we see the tribulations, if we see and learn to see all of the hard struggles that befall us in life, be they toothache or torture. If we see that God our Father has permitted them to produce perseverance in us, which in turn produces Christ likeness, then surely that is reason enough to glory or to rejoice in our tribulations. Do you understand? If you believe that everything that befalls you, even the battles that God permits Satan to come against you with, Satan doesn't have control. God is in control. God is the Lord. And he permits things to come into our lives. Our life and times are in his hands. And he will use the things that are necessary, the things that are best used by his hand to hone us and to make us more like Christ. And so therefore... If we see and learn to understand that whatever hard struggles befall us in life, be as I said, toothache or torture, if we see that God our Father has permitted them to produce perseverance in us, even to teach us how to do spiritual warfare, which in turn produces Christ's likeness in us, then as Paul said, surely it is enough for us, enough reason for us to glory and to rejoice in their tribulation. And I'm not expecting people to say, can I come and speak to you and tell them, I haven't been really well here for the past days. And I'm not expecting them to burst in song and praise and worship in the Lord. But it would be good at the time they left that they were, when they recognized that if God permits things, even the enemy coming against us in the time, it's always because it's working for our good. Because he loves us. But we need to be motivated to seek to persevere to seek to press on, but we must do it in the strength of the Spirit of God. The Lord works in us and for us for his good pleasure to make us more like Jesus. I don't know about you this morning, Christian, but that's one of the things that I always pray say, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to <coughs> love the saints like Jesus. I want to love the unbelievers like Jesus. I want to reach out to people with the love of Jesus and reflect more of Jesus in and through my life that others might come to know him. So therefore, Christian, may we all learn to yield to the Lord and trust him. 
because he has only the best intention for us. Your struggles, even though they bring you to the point of saying, I'm just going to give up. Give up. And let God do what God has to do. Because he loves you. He will not let you go. You are eternally secure in his love. Maybe there's someone this morning here and you're watching and you're not yet, or in the hall and you're not yet uh, a Christian. Well, the Bible does talk, and I was thinking about this during the week where uh, Paul says, Rejoice in your tribulations. The Bible talks of a time of great tribulation uh, that's coming upon the whole world, like never seen or experienced before. It's a terrible, terrible time that is coming upon this world. And let me just say that outside of Jesus, if you are not a Christian, you will not endure. It is that simple. You will not endure. You are not preserved. And you shall not persevere because of your sin. You are currently, according to the word of God, you are currently doomed to destruction. And you will be cast into hell. But the good news of God, the wonderful, wonderful gospel, is that Jesus came into the world to save you. He came into the world to enable you to endure. He came into the world to preserve you and to equip you to persevere unto the end, to be forever in his presence. It is his salvation. It is his work. But all you need to do is confess your sin. Agree with God that you are a sinner. Repent. Turn around and turn away from your sinful life and trust in Jesus and in Jesus alone for salvation. And I hope and pray that today you will do that. On this Remembrance Day, may we all remember the sacrifice of Jesus who laid down his life for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you today that we are learning about perseverance. For me, Lord, in my walk with you, I thought that that was something I needed to do. That it was down to me to to try with all of my strength to keep persevering. 38 years later, speaking of me, Lord, I know that it hasn't been my strength or my effort that has kept me, but it has been your strength and your Holy Spirit who has enabled, equipped, and empowered me to persevere thus far, and I believe that he will continue to do that onto the end. I pray for every one of us this morning, who know you and love you, that we would stop believing the absurdity of Satan's lies to think that we can do anything in our own strength towards our salvation. We cannot even persevere in our own strength. We must rely upon you. Lord, may you teach us, please, to do that. And even at times, Lord, when we do get tired and we get fed up with the back teeth with sicknesses and problems and hard struggles in life, Help us, Lord, to find that when we fix our eyes on Jesus, that we find the strength to press on. And may we do so to the glory of God. May you, Holy Spirit of God, please, work in each of us today to teach us what it really means to glory, to rejoice in tribulation, because the things that you permit to befall us are working to hone us and to produce Christ's likeness in us. And sure, Lord, that's all that we want, to be more like Jesus. Will you help us, please, to have faith in you? And Lord, I pray this morning for anyone watching in, anyone here, Lord, that's not yet a Christian, that you would help them to understand how much you love them, and that they would see the demonstration of your love in the death of Jesus, and that they, Lord, would indeed confess their sin, repent, and trust in him and in him alone for salvation. I ask this in his wonderful name. Amen.